I'm so excited that Cher Rocks is kicking off our season two of Chefs of Antigua because there's such a buzz about this place. Yes, thank you. I'm glad that you've chosen us for the first one. Um, we've been in business almost five years now and certainly the last couple of years has just exploded. Lots of people seem to be enjoying the restaurant and spreading the word. Absolutely. I think it's because it's kind of unique. I mean, forget about the beautiful settings, which would just drag anyone here anyway, but it's that menu. It's very unique, I think, to you, this tapas, right. and uh, although I know you do other things as well. And Joy, this is our chef at Sheer Rock, Simon Christie French. Hi, Simon. He's going to be cooking us a few tapas dishes which are off the lunch menu, and he's going to cook us one main course off the dinner menu. <gasps> Can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> so first of all, I'm going to do the uh, Wahoo Gravel Axe, uh, cured uh, in beetroot. Uh, and it has a little fennel salad with some radish. Uh, and a little citrus dressing as well, okay? So first of all, we start off with uh, some loins of uh, wahoo, which is a particularly, uh, particularly a nice, uh, particular favorite fish of mine. Uh, it's uh, from the local waters. We only use fresh local fish. For the actual uh, cure, I based it on a, gra a traditional gravel axe, uh, but with a slight little twist. So we put beetroot in there, which stains the fish, and it has a lovely, uh, brings a lovely color to it. So first we start off with uh, some salt and some sugar, equal quantities. And then we have an orange. This is a local orange, green orange. A lemon. And a lime. It's so a very citrus, very aromatic, and then the secret ingredient, the beetroot, which ha brings its own natural sweetness, but also brings a slight earthiness to it as well. And what we want to do, we just want to blitz this just until it's, uh, it's smooth, but not completely smooth. Still want a little bit of texture. There we go, that's about it. So we literally have everything, it's still chunky, you've still got chunks of beetroot, still got ch chunks of orange in there. It's exactly what we want. So now, now we're gonna cure the actual fish. Uh, we're looking to cure this about six hours. Uh, want it, just lay it in there. Want it completely submerged. So we literally, submerge the wahoo in there. We will cure that for about six hours now. Uh, so the, the, the fish will just get a little bit uh, uh, tougher around the outside. It will get a little bit more, uh, it, will, it will take on the stained beetroot color. So now we're gonna do the garnish for the wahoo grab X. So what I'm using here is like a mandolin. You gotta be careful with your fingers. Be very careful. Slice it very thin. You could use a, a normal knife as well. As you can see, you get very fine sliced fennel, all evenly cut. And we're simply just gonna put this in a little bowl, mix some olive oil, salt, and pepper, and just mix that around. Okay, here we have a piece of uh, wahoo that's been cured for about six hours in the beetroot uh, cure. Uh, as you can see, it's taken on all that, the beetroot color. Uh, and it's slightly firmer, it's because the salt is just drawing out some of the uh, moisture in the fish, uh, but it's still very, uh, uh, very uh, kind, uh, soft. Okay. What we're gonna do is just put, make a few slices here. You have the uh, fish and the beetroot to stain the outside. So this is one of our tapas dishes. We're just gonna place them around the edge of the plate. Oh, and all this is just presentation. We're going to take some of this, uh, the macerated fennel, just put a little bit in the middle there, and we'll just finish it off with a, a little bit of olive oil. There you go, beetroot cured gravel axe wahoo uh, with a macerated fennel and citrus dressing. Everybody sing along now. Oh, na, na, na. 
<laughs> Listen up, it's me, Black Ellis, and I want to talk to you about coconut. Sweet coconut. Good for make food, brush and kaya, art and craft, greater kick and drops. And best of all, your wonderful coconut milk. Now it would be nicer if to get your milk never takes so much work and will. For the picking and the husking and the grating and the squeezing, cause it plenty time and skill. But I cracked that nut and solved that case. No longer do I have to go hunting coconut. I just leave it all to Grace. Grace Coconut Milk in powder and liquid. Now available in a one kilogram pack. Grace Coconut Milk. Good as homemade. Best for quality. It's the best thing since coconut milk. Center Hardware on Kentish Road has everything you need for building and DIY. Great savings all the time. What are you waiting for? Move that body! Hutchinson's Antigua Limited has a range of products to suit your every need. We are wholesale distributors of top quality brands. Use Beep, Shortox, Airwick, and Lysol products to make your home clean, sparkling, and germ-free. Keep your dogs happy and healthy with pedigree dog food. Hutchinson's Antigua Limited is located on Factory Road, St. John's. Visit or call us today at telephone 481-1550. I am Barrymore Baltimore, Chairman of the Dog Control Authority. The Dog Registration Control Act became law in 2006. If you own a dog, know the law. Failure to comply can mean a fine or imprisonment. Report abuse, call Dog Control at 562-7277. So next we're going to do a uh, yellow fin tuna tartar uh, with uh, fresh Antiguan uh, avocado, lime and uh, jalapeno. Okay, this, uh, this is a uh, lime caught yellow fin tuna. Uh, yellow fin tuna is the best tuna you can get. Uh, it's all local from the same waters around here. Uh, and this dish is, uh, this is a very popular at Shear Rocks. Uh, and we use 100% of the ingredients that come from Antigua. We're dicing it up really because a tartar is effectively raw fish. So, and we add the uh, lime, which adds the acidity to it, which slightly just cures it, which effectively cooks it. So, you want all the little pieces of fish to be, uh, you know, tuna to be coated in the same, uh, uh, the same, the lime, the, the chili, the avocado. So now we have the uh, avocado, fantastic avocados. Pop that in there. Some lime. I'm going to sprinkle with some chili flakes. This is a tiny piece of uh, pepper sauce, and this pepper sauce is specially made for us at Sheer Rocks. It's on our us. That's it and there's some lime juice. We add the lime juice very, at the very end, just so, as soon as the lime juice is added, it's gonna start cooking the fish. And you want, you want the fish to be, to still have that, that texture. So you saw there, you've got all the colors in there. Okay, so now we're just gonna plate up. Here we have some local uh, arugula. Going to put a couple of these lovely leaves on the bottom. We're going to spoon this on top. Just 
just going to finish it off with a couple of slices of jalapeno. Very thinly sliced. Just adds a little bit of a kick again, but not too much. So there we have our lime cord, uh, yellow fin uh, tuna tartar uh, with avocado, lime, and chili. So now we're going to do the uh, burnt tomato bruschetta. It's a very simple dish, uh, but very full flavor, very effective, uh, and it's always an impressive thing for anyone to anyone to have. So first, we start off with these lovely locally grown tomatoes. They're beautifully uh, red beautifully ripe, uh, just soft but still have their uh, 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 firm and great, great uh, smell to them as well. I'm just going to slice it quite chunky, about a centimetre thick. Because we're burning these tomatoes, you add this slight bitterness to it, you want to, you want to burn it, so it has to be a very hot pan, touch of oil, you see the pan start to smoke, that's a great indication, okay? Just pull the pan off though, then add the tomatoes very, very gently, add it, and then add it back to the flame, okay? Um, every time you move the pan, it will knock the heat out. You purposely want to burn these, you know, so it's okay, you, you want to burn them. So now we have these croutons just for our bruschetta. It's just a, a simple roll, sliced, uh, and then in the oven, just baked, so toasted off with a little bit of olive oil and salt. Uh, and that's going to be our base for our bruschetta. So we're going to pull the pan off the heat again, just pull it to one side, add the vinaigrette. You can see the pan is going to go, move the pan a little bit to loosen up the tomatoes. You can see the vinaigrette is going to reduce down. You get a very intense flavour from this. The soy sauce is going to uh, reduce and it's add, going to add to a lovely stickiness. But the, the, the vinaigrette is just going to reduce into the tomato. Um, okay, so all the flavours just going together there. So you can turn off the pan now. Okay, next we're going to do uh, a scotch egg uh, with local chutney. Uh, it's a little bit of a uh, English classic uh, brought, to, uh, brought to the Caribbean by myself. Uh, but we serve actually ours a little bit differently. We serve ours uh, hot. Uh, so it's just slightly runny in the middle. Uh, so what we have here, we start off with some uh, ground pork, uh, which we've literally just mixed a little bit of chopped onion in and seasoned it. With uh, hard boiled uh, an egg for uh, eight minutes. So you just want, you want it firm, but not too uh, firm in the middle. You want it slightly runny. Okay, you can see it's still got its uh, shape, but slightly, slightly soft, a little bit wobbly. It's exactly how you want it. You want to kind of keep the shape of the egg as well. So you want to peel it very carefully uh, and not for it to break up too much. What we're actually looking to do is wrapping the egg in ground pork. And you want to bring the four corners of the cling film up and wrap the egg. It's a little bit, you do have to be a little bit light fingered for this. Just take a little bit of patience. But once you have that here, you have your egg encased in an even layer of sausage meat. Where are we going to do that? We're going to put this in the uh, fridge just to chill for about 10 minutes. So now we have the egg uh, chilled down for 10 minutes. Where I'm actually using uh, some breadcrumbs called panko breadcrumbs here. Uh, they're just a little bit coarser. Uh, you can use homemade breadcrumbs that you like, any, that doesn't matter. Uh, it's just simply to coat the eggs. So just roll your egg in the flour and then into your beaten eggs. As you can see, we have the scotch egg there, all ready to cook. And that's going to be in the fryer for about four minutes, four to five minutes. So what you have here now is the uh, egg after it's been fried. You can see it's got a lovely golden crisp shell to it. Just drain it off a little bit there. What I actually do now as well, is just pop it in a pan and I put it in the oven for about three to four minutes just to make sure the egg is completely cooked. So now we're going to use a serrated knife just because it has a cleaner edge to it. Gently cut it open. And as you can see, the yolk is still runny. Exactly how uh, we'd like it. 
cut it in half. We actually serve this with some local chutney that we make that has mango and plantain, brown sugar. Just serve that like that. And we sprinkle with a little bit of spring onion. So here we have our scotch egg with local chutney. Now we're going to do our blackened grouper uh, with aubergine caviar, uh, zucchini, tomatoes, and uh, black olive. We want to take the uh, uh, top fillet off. So what we do, just make, be careful, I've got a nice sharp knife here. So you make an insertion, incision just behind the gills, down and around. It frees up all of that around there. Now we just go by the, the, the spine of the fish and you just draw your knife down. You just follow the bones down, slowly but surely. Go over the backbone, cut through the bones. There we go. Right, now we're going to cut a portion of the fish. What you want ideally is about yeah, six, five to six gram ounce. Now the next step, what we're going to do is the garnish. We're going to start off what we call uh, aubergine caviar. First of all, we just get a simple aubergine or eggplant, cut it in half, and we want to score the middle. Season olive oil and a little bit of pepper okay we're just going to pop that in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes next we're going to do uh, do you want to make some tomato chutney uh, so it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a twist uh, but it works very well uh, tomato has a natural acidity to it so we're just kind of adding to that really so first of all we start off with some uh, white wine vinegar this is actually half white wine, half uh, white wine vinegar. We do a pinch, pinch of coriander seed, pinch of fennel seed, touch of oil, and a little bit of sugar. Okay, and we're simply just going to reduce that down to about three quarters of garn. While that's reducing, we're going to get on the rest of the uh, garnish for the dish. What we have is some yellow zucchini and some green zucchini. They're pretty much very similar in flavour. We're just using the different colours just for the different presentation. Just lay these out on a tray. A little bit of olive oil. Season it again. What I have here is a griddle. It's very hot. Okay, it's very hot. We want some nice dark lines scorched onto the uh, zucchinis. So just lay these down very carefully. We go. We're going to leave them on there about 30 seconds, uh, just on one side, just so it um, scorches the skin. You get them black marks on there, which is what we're after. Just going to put a couple of cherry tomatoes on there. Next, we're going to do some uh, zucchini puree as well. Uh, what I like to do is uh, source a lot of local ingredients, uh, but really make the most of the ingredients that we have. So that's why I have zucchini on this dish uh, a few different ways, just to bring out the different types of flavour that zucchini offers. So first of all, you get a green zucchini, just grate the zucchini, just like that. So you're left with the outside. Add the zucchini. So now that's about ready now. Now we're going to do, uh, blitz that into a puree until it's just nice and smooth. Literally this is one that I've made earlier. So you can see there, it's just a very smooth puree. That's exactly what we're after. So now we're going to cook the grouper. It's blackened grouper and what makes it blackened is this spice. Uh, which is a, a, a very aromatic mix, about 16 different spices. You add your portion of fish that you have down there, face it down. The side that you're going to cook it into the pan, have it facing down into the spice. Sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. And what you just lift it up, make sure there's an even coating. Just brush off the excess. And then we have a pan already on here. 
You want to get the pan hot, not too hot. Bit of normal cooking oil. And then just lay the fish in the pan, lay the fish away from you so there's no splash. And just let the fish there just, just cook down for a little bit. So as you can see here, the fish just got this, just got this slight blackened edge to it. Uh, you actually want a little bit of bitterness to it. The bitterness adds to the uh, aromatic flavour that we want to add to the dish. So now the fish is turned over, we're just going to turn off the flame and just pop it in the oven. That fish will take about two to three minutes to cook. So remember, grouper is quite a meaty fish. Uh, it's going to take uh, uh, quite a while for the heat to penetrate in there to cook the actual fish. While we're waiting for that to cook, we're going to actually start to plate the dish. So here we have, uh, we have the aubergine caviar, which, I, uh, which we put into the oven earlier. So that's literally been scooped out and then uh, fried off and you just end up with this concentrated uh, aubergine kind of mash really. Okay, next we have the tomato chutney, which we're reducing right down. And as you can see, it's got really, really dark, all the flavors very concentrated. And being a, being a chutney, you want a balance between sweetness and acidity. Uh, and it definitely has that. And here we have the zucchini puree, which we showed show you earlier. So we've just got a plain white plate here. Uh, this is just how we dress this at the restaurant. Uh, I really like this dish, it's a very visually impacting, uh, impact dish, uh, it has a lot of great colours on there and, is, and also uh, utilises a lot of the fantastic produce on the island which we like. Uh, so a couple of what we call swipes, it's a little bit chefy. Then we're actually put the aubergine caviar on the left side of the plate just for the fish to sit on we're going to do some small quenelles just remember this is very intense very intense so you just need a little bit in there then we have our zucchini ribbons which we have here and we're just going to, these are still warm, so just fold these very neatly. You want to just use, use your eyes, just use, use, do whatever you think looks good. Curl these around, just like that. Then we have a little bit of these tomatoes we just have there. Have a little bit. This is what a dried olive, dried black olive, which we just kind of add there. Like I was saying earlier, we I try and use as many, as much of the ingredients, but in different varieties. So again, we have black olive tapenade, but then we have dried black olive as well, which are, uh, uh, which will give you two different completely flavours of uh, of olive. Uh, what I've got here is just like a a uh, skewer. Uh, you can use a cocktail stick, anything that you like. But simply, you could just place that into the fish, and you just what you're looking for is no resistance. If you if the if your cocktail stick or the skewer cannot go through all the way through the fi a fish, it means it's not cooked. Okay, so just pop it back in the oven a little bit longer. This is going through quite easily, so I'm very confident this is nicely cooked. Okay, so that's literally taken about two to three minutes, not very long at all. What I like to do as well, you have all these lovely cooking juices just in the bottom of the pan. Just kind of pour that back over the fish, adds a lovely glaze, and you're just utilizing that already natural flavor that you have in the fish. Okay? So we literally get the fish, we pop it on top of the aubergine, get a little bit of this black aubergine, uh, black olive tapenade. We pop that onto the fish. We're going to decorate this with just some little baby basil leaves. It's in there. Just going to put a little bit in the garnish. 
So there we have it. We have a blackened grouper with zucchini, uh, aubergine caviar, tomato and black olive. Hutchinson's Antigua Limited has a range of products to suit your every need. We are wholesale distributors of top quality brands. Use Beep, Shortox, Airwick, and Lysol products to make your home clean, sparkling, and germ-free. Keep your dogs happy and healthy with pedigree dog food. Hutchinson's Antigua Limited is located on Factory Road, St. John's. Visit or call us today at telephone 481-1550. what we're doing at Barden Center at Perry Bay. We have the best prices and quality. We're working harder to serve you better. Come on down to Bargain Center. Move that body. Chef's World is dedicated to all those who love to cook. We have kitchen gadgets, professional ranges, refrigerators, chef's uniform, glassware and plateware. Visit Chef's World. We're located at Gamble's Medical Center, Friars Hill Road. This is lovely. Simon, thank you so much for cooking this. And Alex, you have recommended a wine that we have with this meal. That's right. Well, there's a, there's a couple of wines actually that are particularly good with this, Joy, because mm -hmm. um, bestsellers provide these and the first one we've got is a rosé it's called Manon it's Côte de Provence um, and it just goes really nicely with the concept of tapas it's very difficult to pair one wine with four dishes and there's so many flavours going on and everything but so it's a nice fresh fun wine easy mm -hmm. drinking and it's available in um, best sellers and also every supermarket on the island. Oh, so that's the well, that's easy to access. Exactly. Now so is there any special thing I should be looking for here? Should I you know, savour it or... Well, it, it's always good to give the wine a little go in the glass so that uh -huh. it releases the aromas and get your nose right in there when you're smelling it. Mm. But what, what you're really looking for is just something fun and fresh because the concept of tapas is just about eating food with friends, sharing and enjoying. So if you can have a wine that's accessible and everyone's going to enjoy it on the table, you know, to go along with some great fresh food, then, then it's easy. It sounds good. And, and what about the... Uh... Okay, so the second, the second wine is a Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, we actually have the bottle there. It's the Amolo from Napa Valley. It's an interesting wine. It's a little bit um, higher price point. It goes very nicely with the blackened spices. You've got a lot of freshness in the plate. You've got the zucchini in two forms, the puree and the ribbons. You've got the tomato. Simon talked about earlier the intensity of the chutney. Um, and then you've got a lot of spices going on there. So what you want is a wine that has some body to it and some strength. We've gone Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it's quite a big aromatic Sauvignon Blanc, but it has a good minerality. The same and a, thing? And a, the... and a nice acidity in the finish, exactly. I mean, when you swirl now, this Now, should one, we it... eat before we taste the wine, or what? I what personally, way? you should taste it first, okay. and eat the food, and then taste again. That's always the best way to do it. Taste the white. Delicious. Exactly. Now, this is the... Was this the tuna tatar? That's it, yep. So okay. with the avocado. With the avocado. Lime and uh, chili, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to taste a little of this. Mmm. Delicious. Mm. Now, it's all about having the tuna really 
seasoned well. Very fresh. Because there's a touch mm. of spice in it. I That's taste it. the freshness as mm. well. Gonna... Fresh fish is the key to this dish. It really is. Uh, it goes with a lot of dishes, really. You need to start off with really core, cool, really high quality base mm. ingredients. And this was such a simplicity to this dish. You have the tuna, uh, the avocado, the lime, and a slight hint oh, of, um, of, of chili a that just comes nice through. A combination. That's it, yeah, exactly. And the, the, this is the bruschetta. Yeah. I'm gonna... Mm. That's the way. Amazing. Glad you enjoy it. It's, it's one and of my favorites. And the fish is just perfect. Thank you so much for joining us on Chefs of Antigua. Until next time. Cheers. Cheers. What's cooking, Antigua? What's cooking, my